Welcome back to the Game to Love podcast. And today we have an extremely special episode featuring Indians number one women's tennis player, Ankita Reyna. It's a pleasure to have you calling in. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. having me firstly. And uh, I hope all the listeners and viewers of Game 2 Tennis podcast, uh, I hope everyone's well at home, safe at home. Well, we appreciate yeah, no, that. Thank you. It's our pleasure, honestly. We've got the number one women's player from India right now. Yeah. This is our, yeah, our first number one player from a country. So, yeah, wow. What an honour for us to have you on. Uh, do you have well? Do you have any update on how things are over in India and what you've been up to during quarantine? Yeah, actually, in India, uh, I think uh, rest of the states they are opening up and it's getting better. But the city I am in right now, I'm in Pune. Uh, okay. It's in the west, a uh, bit southern part yeah, uh, okay. of the country, and uh, it's uh, four hours drive from Mumbai you know, by okay. road. Yeah. So Mumbai and Pune actually are pretty uh, bad right now. Really? And uh, yeah, yeah, like the cases are incre- increasing and we still are under lockdown. So, but we'll know the next update uh, on 30th May. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because oh. Pune, that's where an ATP tournament's held, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're familiar with that. That's like the last bit of tennis we got to see, really. It seems like yeah. ages ago now. <laughs> but 2020 yeah. has just sort of been blending into one. And um, it's going to be exciting to see when tennis comes back. But um, like for you personally, are you, trying to, are you playing anything at all? Or are you complete strict lockdown, not leaving the house? Yeah, I'm not leaving the house. I mean, you know, wow. I really want to <laughs> be careful with this because I feel that, you know, the tennis and the fitness part, you it'll come back once you're on court and once you start training for us because I mean, we, uh, professional players like I, I've been playing for what 22 years now so wow. I feel that it's um, important that you know not to be in that situation or get sick and then I think you lose days and you lose weeks so that, that'll be more tough I feel so I'm just yeah. staying home and doing whatever I can, you know, whatever stuff I've got. I don't have much, but yeah, a few things and I'm trying to manage with it. Yeah, something I really want to know is, have you been doing much cooking? Because um, my girlfriend, she's actually Indian as well. So uh, for her, like, she does amazing dishes and stuff. So I'm just wondering, like, have, you been, have you been trying new dishes or having the same dishes? Yeah, I've actually uh, always been wanting to cook or, you know, learn to cook. I, of course, know the basic stuff, but uh, cooking needs a lot of time. I, you know, I saw that and uh, this is the best time we've got this period. And I, I did uh, make cook some uh, dishes and some, you know, snacks. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's been good to do uh, these different kinds of things. How's your chili paneer? Do you know a good chili paneer? <laughs> <laughs> you are you you like paneer oh it's my favorite i love paneer oh, as well. fan. yeah i i mean i'm not a big fan of paneer all oh, right uh, my family uh, they are but uh yeah i'm not but it's i still you know i still have it whenever they they make it or they order it oh that's interesting i thought you'd be a big fan man it's so good i love it it just tastes so nice yeah yeah it, it is good 
No. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Has there been anything else that you've been doing other than cooking in your uh, spare time at home? Have you just had to stay strictly within the house, or do you have like a garden you can maybe practice in, or anything like that? Um, I mean, I I do step out for grocery like um, uh, in a week or like ten days, and of course I have my family, so some uh, one of them you know steps out so that I don't have to go out, but. Uh, yeah, that that's been it. Yeah. yeah. So, about any new hobbies or anything? Any new hobbies <laughs> you picked up? I've been, uh, I've been doing like I'm reading, etc. And uh, I did a few workshops and courses. You know, like three oh. D uh, workshops. Uh, it's called uh, it's for yoga and meditation. It's called Art of Living. It's quite oh. uh, uh, popular, I would say, and. Uh, I also did uh, ITF online courses, uh, short courses, you know, on um, just basic various topics. So, yeah, that, that's what I'm doing, what I'm doing mostly and spending time with my mom, with my family, because we've always, we always travel, you know, we, yeah. every single week we are on the road. So, yeah, and helping her at home. Ah, that's, that's really good. nice. No, we've noticed that a lot of players at the moment, obviously no one's able to do anything because everyone's at home with their families, spending time with like, say, younger siblings or family members. And it's, it's nice to see that everyone's sort of pulling together and uh, people are coming up with these new hobbies and stuff. So I thought maybe you might have had something a bit quirky or something, but it's good that you're doing, keep, keep at, keeping your mind active and sort of always like learning. Yeah, and stuff. It's interesting because I saw uh, so many other like friends or players, you know, they are painting and uh, yeah. uh, there was this uh, workshop I did with uh, my friend, you know, just stays in the same apartment. It was, you know, you make a greeting card. So as a kid, I used to love doing that, you know, if it was anyone's birthday in the family or friends or you know mom dad i would always make a greeting card I used to love yeah. that and for me it's very uh, like everyone knows art is very you know relaxing and to calm your mind so yeah i did that yeah that sounds uh super interesting i very I'm, i live in like a very creative household as well this has been a sort of time for me and my girlfriend as well she's a creative she works in fashion and so she's been creating lots of uh, like pieces of clothing. I've been creating music. We've sort of been embracing the whole lockdown. But to touch on, like you're saying, it's quite relaxing and stuff. I know that you're quite big into your meditation. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do uh, meditation regularly. Yeah. Does this, does this help a lot with your, uh, does this help a lot with the tennis and staying relaxed on court and that type of thing? Yeah, yeah, I would say that my experience has been that it definitely helps because, you know, you're traveling so much and uh, I mostly have been uh, traveling alone since I was 14 from a young age. So, wow. you know, usually in India, we are not used to it. We always stay with our parents until, you know, we grow up even uh, only after we get married or sometimes even after getting married, you know, we have uh, families stay together. So uh, that was a very tough thing for me. That was a challenge for me. And somewhere I ha had to, uh, you know, slowly uh, get used to that because that, that was the situation, taking finances into consideration. And uh, yeah, it definitely, uh, you know, uh, helps me because I, I, I started enjoying my own company and, uh, you know, uh, learned uh, what, what's the, I mean, I would say rules of, you know, living or something like that. Yeah. More on the spiritual side, I would say. Well, that's really, I, I don't know. I think it's just one of those sort of really underrated things that probably other tennis players who are going through a lot of stress. We spoke to Noah Rubin on one of our other podcasts and he was such a proponent for people's mental health. And I think meditation and that side of things can really help players because I, I don't think anybody really gets to see what you players go through behind closed doors and how tough it really is. It's not just that, even on court, like tennis is such a mental thing as well. Like it's a lot of stress, especially in these big moments and stuff. So it's important to be able to sort of control it even through your breathing and other methods like that, which in essence will help your career and further it. 
Yeah, especially because tennis is an individual sport. You know, you're. Uh, I mean, I uh, compete in both singles and doubles, so I know the difference. And singles, you're there just uh, by yourself. You you need to uh, yeah. think by yourself. You know, keep yourself calm at the same time. So, you know, I would just say that I, I've I've started. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that you know I've uh, understood everything, but uh, I think uh, I'm doing it and following it regularly. So I'm sure that someone it's helping me. Somewhere it's helping me because uh, you know on not only on court but off court as well. You know there are things uh, which uh, later in life challenges you come across. So uh, hope it will help with that. Yeah. Well, it certainly seems to have been working for your tennis because the left part of 2019 and even start of 2020, you've been on fire. You've been yeah. winning a lot of matches. In a way, this break didn't come at a great time for you because it looks like you've been in good form. Um, yeah. And yeah, I was just seeing where the next event would come, really. You've been doing very well in the ITFs. Yeah. Um, from December, I would say, uh, you know, the last tournament of the year that I played, it was in India and it was great to win at home. And then uh, follow, uh, followed by in um, Bendigo, if I'm not wrong, I started the year uh, before Aussie Open and then uh, followed by in Thailand and again in India. And then Fed Cup uh, was a huge uh, you know uh, yeah. thing for us we qualified for the world group playoffs for the first time it was a historic yeah. win for us and, uh, Massive. Uh, great memories for us yeah. so uh, i was really looking forward to this land <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's so <laughs> unfortunate. What, what could have happened? A world of pandemic just literally taking it away from you. I felt that, you know, the performance uh, was, I don't know if I should say peaking, but yeah, was going well and uh, was really looking forward to how it would be uh, in the slams. And then, yeah. Yeah, here Some we are. are <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really interesting, though, that... Uh, I'd looked at your career as well, and it just seems that it's just been on a constant upward trajectory, like from when you started. And the, every year, your ranking just keeps seem to be improving every single year. And now you're reaching your. We're speaking to you at your highest current ranking in your career right now, and you're what? You're only twenty seven at the moment, is that right? And yeah. so, yeah, you've got like. Do we see like top hundred? top 50 like what's the targets for you coming up in the near future I, I, I actually feel the other way because <laughs> uh, you know that there, there was this time when i broke uh, into top 300 and then my rankings were there for some time you know and then yeah. again i uh, i came close to i would say 200 uh, in 2015 and then again uh, i was there for some time and, you know, I always get these questions that, you know, uh, you know, why you you were there for whatever period of time. And, you know, or they would say that you got uh, stagnant at this ranking. But I think like when people don't know about tennis in, um, you know, too much in depth, uh, there's so many factors like uh, there's financial thing and yeah. then you know, it, it's a process. It just doesn't happen overnight. And I also believe that for some players, you know, it's uh, it comes early. But And for some players, it might come later. But as long as uh, you get there and you reach your goal, that, that's what matters in the end. And everyone has their own journey. So it doesn't have to be same for everyone. And like I mentioned, you know, traveling alone. I mean, uh, I know how it works was you know when i was uh, traveling by myself because uh, you know staying uh, alone in the room and not even finding a room partner uh, things like that so i mean like i said i come from a different culture different background and uh, i understand there must have been other players as well you know who uh, travel alone sometimes or uh, who have had similar uh, situations but uh, yeah i feel everyone has their own challenges I think that even makes it even more remarkable what you've done and just sort of how you're, how you're going with your career and to win in, like recently winning in India. How was that? Like flying the flag for India, winning in your hometown with all the crowd there. It must have been amazing, right? 
yeah yeah it was great i uh, i had my mom with me and also uh, my coach was there for two three days uh, initially so and yeah th- there were people to watch as well so i think uh, it's great i also had friends there so they would come and watch your match and uh, you know uh, my mom was there so that that's very uh, motivating for me and like you are a bit relaxed rather than compared to when you are by yourself you have to book the courts find a practice partner you know like you yeah, know all yeah, this of course like was it not added pressure though seeing your mom in the crowd <laughs> just thinking oh i need to do i need to win this one for for my uh yeah i mean so, sometimes it's it is like that but uh, i've like i said you know she's uh, i i've i've traveled alone so she's not traveled much with me so i you know i try to take it in a positive way but of course there are times when you feel that because because they are there with you and you know of course they want you to win <laughs> and yeah. when you know it, that they, they want you to win so yeah yeah they can have like a detrimental effect sometimes when you have your family there shouting and screaming on every single I remember like playing when I was younger you just have like playing even tennis or football when you have family members there they tend to be the people who shout the most and then get so into the point that sometimes it can become off putting I used to find it off putting me I used to <laughs> crumble under the pressure of it I used to be so scared <laughs> like oh my dad's watching me I need to do this <laughs> Yeah, it's funny actually sometimes because I would come out of the court out of the match, and my mom, like I could see how tense and stressed she would be. But <laughs> like, like she's playing the match, they're sitting there outside. But you know, trust me, at times for for them, it's even more like they are yeah. anxious and all those things. Yeah, yeah, it's probably harder for them than you. You're probably quite relaxed doing your thing, gliding around the court. Needs yeah, a teach. When you talk about it, when you come out, you know it's funny. You start laughing. You have to teach them some of your meditation techniques for the crowd. I think because <laughs> <laughs> you had like these, you had two uh, tournaments this year that you won, which was uh, incredible. Just obviously hitting this amazing form, annoying that the break hit. You had uh, in Thailand that you had a good win as well, which was in I don't know if I get the pronunciation right. Nonthaburi is this correct? Yeah, Nonthaburi. Yeah, where you uh, beat uh, two really good players that were uh, on mine and Jaron's radar. You beat Leone Kung, which was, she's yeah, a really great yeah. up-and-coming player. And yeah, you, she played her in Hawaii and she made it to the finals, yeah. Yeah, and you beat her, like, it seems like by watching the match that you just seemed to overpower her quite a lot, I think, off the court. I think that you every time there was a rally you just started getting more and more powerful as the rally went on and then she couldn't handle your power. I think at the baseline, you're very good, extremely good at the baseline, very powerful player. And I think with that, it's a good sort of um, fundamentals for success in the sport. So it's good that you can work on other things to, to, to flourish, but you've got the fundamentals already there. Yeah, yeah. I I also saw some uh, like highlights of that video, and then you know, of course, I saw her playing uh, uh, in Hua Hin, and mm-hmm. you know, that's the I would say beauty of the sport or tennis. Uh, you know, one day a player might win, and then you know, next day uh, it's a new week, it's a new match, new tournament. You never know what happens, and also we know. That that you know in tennis the conditions and the court the balls everything they change every week and all those things also matter what what suits you and what you're comfortable with yeah what would you say you're most comfortable with like what sort of i don't know because we've spoken to other players and they say sometimes the humidity playing in such a humid place can be really really uncomfortable and it's just a matter of who gets the first set first or something and then if the other player has enough energy to keep going and get the second set like this this is what it's down um, to for me i would say that since i come from india you know yeah. like I, for me <laughs> heat and humidity i'm i i've been used to it also from a young age because initially i i i started playing in another city called amdavad which is also in the west part of india and uh, i'm born and brought up there uh, and that place is really hot can be really hot and i've played at like 2 or 3 pm in the afternoon which is the peak hour oh, so oh. that that's when you know i was young so i think that somewhere helps you later because you get 
uh, acclimatized to it. So for, for you, when you come to Wimbledon, it's probably a bit cold, right? A bit chilly. <laughs> because me and Ben, when we're there, we're burning, we're there struggling with water. <laughs> <Who's> the- <laughs> That's just in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not even playing. We're just, we're just watching. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when I said I love London, I would just say there's just one yeah. thing, you know, <laughs> there's just one thing, and that's you know when the weather changes and you don't know when it's gonna change, when it's gonna rain, and suddenly it gets uh, cold. Yeah. So yeah, but when it's uh, when the sun is shining, it's really beautiful. Yeah, that's another thing I wanted to just try and pick on a little bit. I don't want to seem like I'm prying, but I don't see that many grass court. Uh, matches on your record is there a, is this just because you've predominantly grown up playing hardcore and you just honed your game into hardcore or is there just not much grass court tennis in the areas where you're playing or um i think actually in india we uh, we do have some grass courts and earlier okay. i think we had uh, a bit more also i won the women's national championship which was on grass court when I was 16. And the oh, same wow. year I won uh, junior uh, champion, national championship as well. But I think what you're talking about, you know, in the professional circuit about the record, I feel that once I started playing uh, Wimbledon and the Grand Slam only at that time, because otherwise there aren't, that's the only period when we have grass court tournaments, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, I just started playing on them when, you know, I, I got into Wimbledon. Actually, a year before. I, I didn't uh, get a chance to play, but I was there on site since I was one out uh, in alternate list on the site. So, yeah, just a year before I got into my first Wimbledon. Okay. So what about the, with the slams in general? Do you have a favorite slam or like a slam you really want to go furthest in one day? Yeah, Wimbledon has always been my favorite slam. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Is that because so I love grass? It's, I always say it's my favorite, so yeah. Oh, that's okay. interesting. Yeah, we'd, we'd, love, we'd love to have you over. In matches, so I would say also because of that. Oh. Yeah, but it would be great for when, well, when tennis finally comes back, hopefully next year's Wimbledon, hopefully we'll see you there. We can come along and cheer you on. We'll be flying a flag for you in the corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be good. Yeah, it was heartbreaking to see that, you know, it got, uh, it had to be cancelled. But of course, safety comes first, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, speaking of that, uh, is there any sign of tennis uh, coming back for you anytime soon? Is there anyone contacting you, suggesting any tournaments or anything like that? Even exhibitions. It doesn't have to be on the main circuit. I know we was talking to a few players and um, even your, your hitting partner or, or doubles partner, Bian Shu, she was saying that she started to play tennis again now. There's a few tournaments talk to her about uh, coming back. So I wondered if it's the same for you. Yeah, in India now, uh, like I said, you know, few states uh, have opened up. They've started to open up. So uh, some cities, some places, they have uh, started practicing, of course, you know, limited number of players and the time is also limited. Uh, but not where I am at the moment. We we are hoping that maybe from first week of June, that there might be uh, some uh, improvement. Uh, but yeah, let's see. The All India Tennis Association, you know, once things get better, that they are planning to have like regional zonal tournaments. Like so you stay um, in, in the same region, in the same zone. So that we at least have matches and match practice. But um, there'll be only once uh, things get better and open up uh, all over India, I think. Yeah, while talking about India, actually, me and Ben was talking prior to you coming on about some of the academies and stuff, because we've had a few people reach out to us um, on Instagram and Twitter, like who started in, uh, academies in like, Delhi and stuff. Uh, I just wondered, like, is... Is, is India getting a lot of funding for tennis at the moment? Because it seems to me like um, there seems to be a lot of, uh, it seems to be a very popular sport at the moment in India. And there seems to be a lot of fans. It always has been, I feel, but I feel like they just need a bit more funding to sort of get people through that next step to be able to get to competitions or be able to fulfil their hobby. Um, yeah. so I just wondered, like, is there more stuff? Can, do you know anything about what's going on at the moment? Any plans? 
yeah it's uh, definitely uh, you know getting better i feel more we should have more uh, corporate uh, you know sponsors coming in to sponsor events and to have international tournaments in india because when i go outside uh, in europe or anywhere else you know i see so many uh, sponsors they have you know like these companies who come in and sponsor the tournament pitch and so i think that should happen a lot more because now the uh, uh, i would say the the sports ministry in india you know um they they are they are doing they have come up with lot of schemes and uh, they are uh, doing a lot of things to uh, promote sports in general and tennis uh so i feel that that's one thing you know also there are uh, of course a, lo- a lot of lot more you know academies and i would say infrastructures much better since back when i started yeah Yeah, that's good. We've certainly noticed, it, haven't we, Ben? Like, there seems yeah, to be a lot sure. more like people even watching our podcast, like commenting from different academies and stuff, which is good to see. And a lot of the time, it's like younger kids as well, because with tennis, I think it's very important to start young. Like when you're younger, like to have the opportunity and stuff. So yeah. that's brilliant, in my opinion. So that's hopefully, that's a worldwide thing. <laughs> when I started, I was four, and it was such a coincidence that we had a tennis academy right next to our house. And of course, yeah. Yeah. Synthetic courts, really uh, good courts, and they had a stadium on one side for audience, and they actually had uh, ATP events. You know, back then they were called satellites. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we had like international uh, events happening right next to our house. That's amazing. Do you yeah, think that's like the opportunity what people need, man? Like if it's on top of you like that, it just gives so much more encouragement and opportunity for people. Like, when do you think that we'll be able to see a WTA event being played in India? Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we've had uh, one that I I remember I played was in Pune in 2012, and then okay. I think a couple years it wasn't there, and then it came back in Mumbai in 2017 and 18. And okay. it was supposed to be this year as well, but not. Oh, okay, so they're yeah. trying. They're trying their best to add add it into the calendar. Hopefully, it can become more of a regular fixture, though, and just be one of those ones which you're defending points at every year, that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, it really helped to have that WTA in Mumbai, Mumbai Open, because I played uh, quarterfinals. I was the only Indian to reach uh, in the. quarterfinals then you know uh, from there i got a jump and it clicked for me i would say because after that we had fed cup in india in 2018 yeah. fed and i i i won i did well i won all my matches and i had some yeah. very good wins <laughs> very so that's how it makes a, a big difference but i feel that there are few aspects or factors that affect it you know like uh, how much the sport is viewed or how how many fans you have yeah for the event etc these things so you know once if we can get the sport uh, tennis more popular then i think it's a cycle and then it's you know it goes on yeah let's uh, yeah. let's touch back on to because you were saying about obviously the fed cup let's you just brushed over those big wins as if they were just like oh, another day at the office but uh, yeah two amazing great wins there Yulia Putintseva that you managed to beat there what an incredible player she is and uh, another one Zhu Lin as well like you beat yeah. two two amazing players in that 2018 uh, Fed Cup like what was it like like what how did you feel when you uh, like first off Putintseva like this is the household name really So how yeah. did it feel once you'd uh, finished that match quite a grueling match three setter came through 6-4 in the third Yeah you know for me Fed Cup has always been very special uh, it's really close to my heart and uh, because it's only one week in the year where you come together as a team i mean the other indian girls are also there otherwise you're just by yourselves you know traveling and then you have the whole team together so just the the atmosphere and uh, it uh, i i just get really pumped up and 
uh, to have you know india uh, india your country's name uh, on your back for me it's always been a dream to represent my country and you know i realize very few people have that opportunity so i'm very grateful for that and that's why when uh, i'm out there you know i give it all yeah wow. Now these team events are brilliant. The camaraderie between the teams, the atmosphere yeah. always seems to be brilliant. It's always a good watch. And like you say, it must be an honour to be a player, to be actually representing your country, not just yourself as well. So, yeah, yeah. it's remarkable. Exactly. I mean, you have uh, your teammates, you know, <laughs> shouting uh, for you, <laughs> screaming for you. And, uh, yeah, all that... Also, like uh, it was, I was very excited as well because it was in India. So you know, uh, in the Asia Oceania, uh, only in a few years it comes uh, comes back to your country. So yeah, yeah. and also Zulin, I I've played her a uh, couple of times. So you know, I ca- kind of knew um, how to play her. I'd played her before. Yeah, good strategy. Worked it worked her out. talking talking about like other players on the tour like we we always say that we find the the women's tour is very open like you look at the top say 30 40 players even probably top 100 players i feel like anyone can win these tournaments it's more with the men's it's very much like um when you look at the slams it's predominantly the big three it's either one of them three in the finals or winning it the women seems to be a lot more open which is extremely exciting for like a spectator's point of view and I'm sure players as well, because you're entering a tournament and no one really knows. Whoever brings their best game on the day has a real shot of winning something. So for you, like, do you look at, is there any players on the tour? It doesn't have to be one of the big ones. Just anyone you look up to and think, wow, I love their style of play. They're amazing players. Um, I mean, if, of course, you know, I've uh, been idolizing Serena always as a young kid. But uh, I, I also think... Uh, I would say I like how Bianca plays Andrescu. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, I played her two years back in Japan, and uh, yeah, it was like. Uh, <laughs> what was that like? I, I, it was uh, she played really well, and I think it was semi-finals match. And uh, after that, I spoke to my coach, and he's like, <laughs> "What happened?" You know, he started asking me that I uh, is everything fine physically or you know did something played <laughs> <laughs> really well and by i think end of that year she was already top around top 100 yeah it's yeah. the same that she just recently had an injury but like you say this this girl is incredible the way she plays yeah. is just amazing we watched her recently what the most recent u.s open yeah winning that was- yeah, and it was just amazing. the way she won it as well like is incredible and she's definitely and one to watch like- out for yeah. Also, you know, her game style is aggressive. Um, no doubt she has variety as well. But, I, you know, I because my uh, I have similar games that I like to play aggressive. So uh, that's very impressive. And also, uh, you know, the kind of confidence she has when she's on court. You know, when you watch her matches, you can see it. So I think that's something great to learn. Yeah, I yes, think so I think your I think your coach is definitely yeah. a bit harsh there for that one. <laughs> yeah, very harsh. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's that I've uh, you even with like uh, top players or good players, it happens that usually I have a close match, and yeah. uh, I might not win, but it's a really close match. So you know, you know you're on the right path and you're doing the right things and you're improving, and then <laughs> you uh, suddenly you know, there's a match like this. And you start thinking, but and then after some time, you see that the player is, you know, clearly he's well, been, uh, player is talented, and you know, you can make out from the performance in a few weeks or months. Like the same thing happened when I played uh, Coco in uh, French Open last year, I think. And, yeah. Uh, wow. I I lost, I think, three and four or four and four. I four and four, remember. yeah. Yeah, straight sets. And I, I was a bit disappointed because I felt I couldn't, I didn't play like uh, my best fully uh, game wise. You know, of course I d- did my best, gave gave my full effort, but would say like sixty percent. So I came on and my coach was there uh, for that week, and you know I I told him, but he said you didn't play bad, and you know that's the difference when someone's watching. <laughs> 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 I thought he would like me. 
you know uh, angry or uh, Uh, like upset because because I I felt that I I didn't play good I felt complete the completely the other way and then uh, in few weeks you know we saw it in Wimbledon yeah well and yeah she's really yeah. so six four six four is not exactly too bad it just shows how, how promising you are as a player and what potential you like have really. So yeah, yeah, well done for that. I think with same with Andreescu as well. Like if you'd have known that she was going to win the US Open <laughs> coming up, I don't think that result. At that point, you feel terrible, you know. Even uh, I mean, if like the match against Coco, you know, uh, my dad would say because sometimes he's not from a sports background, and uh, he he he's back uh, home in India, and he's just seeing it online, the score, and uh, you know. How old she is, and he'll be like, yeah. she's fifteen years old. But you know, and all that doesn't matter here in a tennis match or no. a tennis sport. Then in a uh, few weeks, yeah, we saw that she uh, she has great potential, and yeah. Uh. I, yeah, I wanted to bring. I know that we've got got that much time left. I just wanted to just get your take on one more thing. I know that you have your uh, one of your idols as a uh, Sonia uh, Mirza. Uh, what's it like yeah. playing doubles with her now? <laughs> yeah, it it was great uh, opportunity. You know, I've uh, even earlier in Fed Cup, uh, I think I've played with her once in doubles, and uh, not only uh, for you know tennis players or in tennis, but generally uh, in India for all the women. I think uh, she's been a great in- inspiration, Definitely. and also now she uh, she had a baby and she. Came back, so that's just <laughs> amazing wow. because you know you you gain weight and all those things, and then you have to get fit and then start playing again. So uh, yeah, it's remarkable, it really is. Of, yeah, there's a lot to learn, and also uh, the good thing uh, that I've I've learned from her is that she's very fearless on court. Uh, doesn't matter who's uh, you know and, uh, on the other side. So yeah, it, it it's uh, it was uh, great to like she came back uh, this time in Fed Cup, and uh, it I think it also you know has an impact uh, for the other teams because you know uh, yeah. they know that there's a strong doubles team as well, strong doubles player as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. well, I think we're pretty much running out of uh, time on the call now. But Yeah, it's a shame. We've already got a minute left. But I thank know. you so much for that. We loved it so much. I'm sure Definitely. you guys watching are enjoying it as well. And Keita, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Yeah, uh, I guess we'll wrap it up there then. Ben. Yeah, Anything left all, the, to say? all the best for, for when tennis comes back and we'll be rooting for you when you're back on court. That's, thank you. We'll be cheering you on all the way. So keep going. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Take All right. Care. Thank you. Take care. Bye.